Bible then says, But the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding the accursed things. For Achan, the son of Kami, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, took off of the accursed things, so the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, or Ai, which is beside Beth Aven, on the east side of Bethel, and spoke to them, saying, Go up and spy out the country. So the men went up and spied out Ai, and they returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not let all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and attack Ai. Do not worry all the people there, for the people of Ai are few. So about three thousand men went up there from the people, but they fled before the men of Ai, and the men of Ai struck down about thirty-six men, for they chased them from before the gate as far as Shebarim, and struck them down on the descent. Therefore the hearts of the people melted and became like water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening. He and the elders of Israel, and they put dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, Lord God, why have you brought these people over the Jordan at all to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? All that we had been content and dwelt on the other side of the Jordan. O oh Lord, what shall I say? When Israel turns its back before its enemies, for the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear it and surround us and cut off our name from the earth, then what will you do for your great name? Verse 10, So the Lord said to Joshua, Get up, why do you lie thus on your face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken some of the accursed things, and they have both stolen and deceived, and they have also put it among their own staff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies, because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy the accursed from among you. Get up, sanctify the people, and say, sanctify yourselves tomorrow, because that says the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in your midst. O Israel, you cannot stand before your enemies until you take away that cursed thing from among you. So they begin to look for who had done uh, the wrong. Hallelujah. Verse 20 says, And I can answer when they were looking for the people who had taken that cursed thing, they found that it was Achan. And the Bible says that, And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and this is what I have done. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels, I, for, I coveted them and took them, and there they are hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent with the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent, and there it was hidden in his tent with the silver under it. Praise the name of Jesus. Then Achan was stoned. Then chapter 8, uh, they conquered I. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's just a brief summary. Amen. Amen. Let's look at uh, James chapter number 4. The book of James chapter number 4. Let's read uh, verse 6. The Bible says that, but he gives more grace. Therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Let's also look at uh, Hebrews 12, and let's read from verse 1. If you dare say, Amen. Amen. Right. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares or entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. We thank the Lord for his word. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're still talking about advancement, moving forward, making progress, taking strides, taking territories. That's what God is saying to us, hallelujah. That God wants us to move 
from the place where we are to the place he has promised and assigned for each and every one of us. Amen. There is such a place that is beyond where you are that God wants to take you. Where you are, no matter how good it is, is not your final resting place. Because the Bible has clearly spoken that the path of the just is like the sun that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Amen. And the metaphor that is given of our life is that of a race. Amen. And so you do not finish the race uh, somewhere in the middle. A race means that it is progressive. Hallelujah. That's why it's a race. You don't race on one place. Amen. And so it means that our lives should be a story of motion and progress. Hallelujah. We must never be stuck in one place because it is not how God has designed our lives to be like. And so wherever we find ourselves, like uh, Tulani was saying, we must continually be moving from place of one place of glory to another. We must always never find ourselves in a place of comfort where we are like, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Nimrod, who went to the Tower of Babel and said, you know what, we found a good place here, let's build a tower and let's settle here. When God had said that, fill the whole earth, hallelujah. And so in our journey in life, there are many places that will tempt us to stay. But the design of God is that we should never settle, amen. But we should continually be making strides, progressing towards the great promise of God that is over our lives, amen. And so even as we were talking about it last week, that the presence of God is with us to make sure that the way is prepared before us, hallelujah. But one of the challenges that uh, we will find in life, I was doing a, some light reading during the course of the week, uh, and I was looking at uh, uh, successes and failures of uh, great people of renown in the marketplace and in the sports arena. And one of the things that I discovered was that it is difficult to maintain momentum. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It is difficult to stay at the top. It is difficult to continue winning. Hallelujah. That's why even right now in the English Premier League, uh, it's, it's a unicorn to have a team that's going unbeaten. It's, it's not normal. It's not the norm. Because it is always difficult to maintain momentum. And so when you have a team that goes for 40 games unbeaten, it's something special because it's not normal. Hallelujah. <laughs> this is our place. I appreciate it. Please don't distract me. We, you ask now talk. <laughs> and so you find that it's very difficult to continue on a path of progress. Hallelujah. That's why you can uh, look at people who once were but are no more. Hallelujah. Great names of the past that continue, that have failed to continue on the path of progress. They have seasons where they had a tremendous increase in growth, but it's just now history. Hallelujah. And I was, and I was looking at, uh, at sports people who could not stay at the top, not because of a lack of ability or opportunity, but one of the challenges that you see when people fail to go forward is that they entangled themselves most of the time. Hallelujah. Because once God has gifted you and given you grace and opportunity, many times there is nothing on the face of the earth or in heaven above that can stop you except yourself. Yes. It's like that famous quote from that cartoon, we have found the enemy and the enemy is us. Hallelujah. And so many times when God wants to move us forward, he clears the way. He goes before us to make the crooked path straight. He raises valleys and levels mountains so that he has created the highways in the wilderness for us that nothing can stand in our way except ourselves. And so as we're talking about advancing, as we deal with the obstacles and the challenges that stand before us, the greatest challenge that we must deal with is self. Because if you do not deal with you, you might be your greatest adversary in life. You might be the greatest reason that you do not advance. I, I know there is a devil out there. Hallelujah. But the devil is under our feet. The Bible says that I saw Satan 
falling like lightning, hallelujah. And the word of God goes on to say, Behold, I give you power to trample upon snakes and scorpions and all of the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hallelujah. We are seated in heavenly places above all powers, principalities, and all rule. We are there. And so Satan is not a difficult object for us. Because we have been given authority over his works and over his machinations. Hallelujah. But the greatest challenge that we have is with ourselves. If we don't deal with us, our progress may not be guaranteed. Hallelujah. We can talk about advancement because that's what God wants for us. But we may never experience the reality of moving forward. Because we ourselves have not geared ourselves and have not dealt with us. Hallelujah. And so we find the children of Israel here having gained and gathered momentum. Hallelujah. They've gone through the Jordan River. Bah! It's open. They've gone through Jericho. Walls come down. They wipe out everything in Jericho. Hallelujah. And the momentum is so high that you know what? They just feel that we're, as we go towards the next target, we're just going to hit it and we're looking beyond eye. We're looking at bigger targets beyond what we are seeing in eye. Hallelujah. Eye is not even an issue with us. Amen. So let's rest the rest of the people and let's just take 3,000 because the men of eye are few. Hallelujah. It's a routine victory for us. Hallelujah. And so we are looking at other places to progress to beyond this place because this one is not an issue. Hallelujah. Amen. And as they go to I, the Bible says that they were routed by the men of I. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when they came back to camp, Joshua, the Bible says that, went and he was weeping before the Ark of the Covenant with the elders because it shouldn't have been like this. Mm. Hallelujah. It shouldn't have been this way. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't know if you have ever been in a place where something that should just be routine becomes very difficult. Mm. Hallelujah. You have already dealt with Jericho, which is a much difficult challenge. And this challenge that we are facing is just routine. Compared to what we have been through, this one, ah, we can even just send our children. They will just do the job for us. But that small challenge becomes a place of great defeat. And Joshua doesn't know why. Hallelujah. He doesn't say you win some and you lose some. He is so perplexed that he goes together with the elders of Israel before the Ark of the Covenant to inquire of God, why did we lose? Because we were not supposed to lose. We were supposed to continue on our path of advancement. Why are we not advancing? Hallelujah. That was the question. Why are we not advancing? What what has caused us to stop here? We seem to be stuck now at Jericho. Why we should have been past eye by now? Why are we stuck? Hallelujah. And God responds as God is God. He responds to this cry from Joshua. And God tells Joshua to get up. Verse 10, chapter number 7 of Joshua. Get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? Israel has sinned and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. Hallelujah. Now you see what's happening here. Joshua is perplexed as to why they have been stuck and their progress has been stalled. He's asking God and saying that, God, you have caused us to be defeated. If the people around hear it, they will say, you know what, these people who carry your name have been defeated. Hallelujah. And everyone will gain confidence to come and attack us. And God is telling him, no, this thing is not about me. Hallelujah. Don't pray and say, God, you have forsaken us. It's not that God is not with you, but it's what you have done. Hallelujah. The problem is not with God. The Ark of the Covenant is still there. Joshua, the military leader who has been leading them in all the campaigns, is still as skillful as he was. The only problem is that there is now a problem with you that has caused you to be stuck. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so you discover that in life, many times when people get stuck, it is not a problem that God is not with them. It is not even sometimes that they are not skillful anymore. But many times there are things 
in them that cause them not to progress. And God wants you to deal with those things, hallelujah, that cause you to get stuck in places where you shouldn't be stuck. Amen. You are now just at the place and you are now just enjoying you see, that the Jericho that you took over, hallelujah. But you should be in I by now, but because you failed to, to deal with you, mm. you cannot go beyond that victory at Jericho. And so that is the place that you continue dwelling at and say, you know what, uh, this is what God gave me. This is, uh, you know, everything becomes about that place. Right. It becomes your comfort zone because you are not willing to confront yourself to go forward. Hallelujah. And so many of us are at our Jerichos where we have found great victories. Mm. But those victories have not translated into other campaigns of progress. Right. Because you fail to deal with you and fail to go beyond that one victory you had. Okay. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm. And so we've got great victories that we've won in the past, but we have never moved from the victories we had. Mm. Yes. And so we are, we are now content being a Jericho, at least, you know, we, we've got a story about Jericho. We won something. We overran Jericho. The walls came down. We, we planted this place. Hallelujah. But what about going forward to I? You can't go to I before you deal with the thing that causes your progress to stop. All right. All right. Hallelujah. All right. Yeah. And we're not saying that Jericho is a bad place. Mm. Because Jericho was a good place. The city of pounds. But there are other places to conquer. But you can't conquer them before you conquer self. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And so there are things that you must be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. That there are things in my life that cause me not to advance. Right. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Right. That economy is bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everyone knows that. Mm -hmm. Opportunities are few and far between. But for many people, the economy is not the problem. Mm. They are their biggest problems, but they refuse to confront that and acknowledge that I am my biggest problem. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. I am my biggest problem. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. And so, these guys are so confused by the defeat, we should be progressing. And God says, no, there is something, there is sin in the camp. Because the instruction that God had given was, as you enter Jericho, destroy everything. Destroy everything. The gold and the silver must be things that are dedicated to God. Hallelujah. But every other thing, the livestock, the clothes, the everything, destroy it, completely ransack that place and destroy everything. But while they are doing that, the Bible says that Achan, while they are winning the Lord's victory, sees a garment. Hallelujah. Ooh, I wonder what kind of garment it was. Hallelujah. It's a very nice one. <laughs> Masashi. Jesus. It says, when I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, I think he was also familiar with this fashion because he knew that this one is not a common, it's a Babylonian garment in Jericho. Hallelujah. He says, that I saw uh, a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels. I converted them and took them. And there they are hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent with the silver under it. This is Akan. God has given an instruction. Don't do this thing. Hallelujah. And these guys are not uh, unfamiliar with what God does to disobedience. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. Okay. They are guys who know the story of uh, uh, the guys who the earth opened. And got swallowed. In the wilderness, people got beat by snakes. Because God was not pleased with them. So he's very much familiar with how God would deal with sin in the camp of Israel. But I, I, I suspect that Achan felt that this thing is too small to cause any difference. Mm. 
Hey. Hallelujah. Hey. Praise the Lord. And so he takes the garment and hides it. And in his mind, he does not expect that this could have a bearing on anything. Mm. Hallelujah. It's uh, more like in our contemporary white lie. It is not something that has any effect. If I just lie about this thing, it must not have an effect on anything because it's just a small thing. It's one man stealing something in a camp of probably four million people. So I don't think that this could have an effect on anything. I think this is the reasoning of this man. And so he takes the garment and hides it in his tent as though nothing happened. And he's not expecting anything to happen anyway. Because it's just one man. He's not anyone. Hallelujah. He's not an elder in Israel. He's not an, uh, a commander or a captain. He's just Akan. <laughs> and so what he has done must not have the effect that it has had. Hallelujah. Mm. It shows us that there is nothing small in the face of God. Yes. I know many of us have got things that we harbor and that we hide, that we have dug in our tents like Akan. Hallelujah. And no one knows. And, uh, but sometimes, uh, when we try to survey and look at uh, the life of an individual, and we look at their talents, their opportunities, and the gift of God that is upon their life, they should be making progress. And so that's why Joshua is so confused. Every ingredient for success is present. So why are we stuck at Jericho? Why can't we go beyond where we have won our victory? Joshua can't tell. Because there is something very small that is hidden that no one knows about. Hallelujah. Amen. Something that no one else knows. Not even Joshua. He has no clue. He doesn't even know who Akan is. It's hidden in the tent. And the people are stuck. And if we had brought in a professional, an analyst, a consultant to say, you know what, please assess this situation. There is a small town of I. We have our troops. We have got the Ark of the Covenant. We have got the greatest general here, Joshua. And we, we, we cannot tell why we are failing to take I. They, you would have said, you know what, I, this doesn't make sense. Maybe try again. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Because everything that you need to take this thing, you have. Right. But he does not know that there is something that is entangled these people. That even though they have all the ingredients for advancement, they have tied themselves to a place where they can't progress. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where we are as individuals. Because there are things that no one else knows about about us. That even as we pray for each other and say, God, this person must move from where they are. They are must, because God, there is really nothing about this person that, that must make them stuck where they are like this. But meanwhile, the individual we are pushing for is things that they have hidden. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And some are thinking in their mind that we're in the New Testament, God would not deal with sin in the way that he did with Achan. Hallelujah. Mm. But in the New Testament, that's where God says, you know what? God is a resistor of the proud. Hallelujah. Mm. That word means God sets himself against. Or if you are Zimbabwe, he sets himself against. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sets himself against you. Hallelujah. Because against, you know, has no force. Yeah. But he, if God is against you, <laughs> my friend, you, you can overcome against. But against. Hallelujah. So you will find that God stands against anyone who is proud. It means that God looks at attitudes. Hallelujah. He looks at how the because you can't look, you, you can't see attitude. Hallelujah. Because pride is a condition of the heart. Yes. You can be proud while everyone thinks that you're humble. Mm. But
But God looks at the heart. <laughs> and then God says, you know what? I, I am resistant to such people. Hey. Gifted, Christian, everything going for them. But God is standing against you. And everyone is wondering, why are you not progressing? Because even though there is no devil resisting you, there are no gates that are shut. God is standing against you. Because there is something hidden somewhere in your heart that causes you not to advance. And so, God stands against the proud. Hallelujah. Just as he stands against Akan and the entire nation of Israel, how a small, seemingly small sin, a garment bound. It is said that he took a whole shop. So the whole shop. I saw a Babylonian garment, one. Some gold, some silver. We should not have a problem over one garment. But alas, my Lord, the whole nation suffered for just that one garment. And I wonder how many things have been left at the mercy of that one garment in your life. Hallelujah. I know you can, because one of the challenges that we have with life is that we look at life from the angle of man and not from the angle of God. Because to us, we weigh things. That's our challenge. This, this should not be that much of a problem. Hallelujah. You know, this should not cause me so much. You know, it's just one. It's just one time. It's just one time. It's once in a while, you know, it's just one lie. It's just a little deception, but by and large, the thing is true. And because we think like men, we behave like men as well. And we expect God to view our shortcomings as we would view them. Say, ah, but Mario, how can you make an entire nation suffer over one government? Is that fair? Ah, that, that isn't fair. And that's how we evaluate God. Ah, God. But when I told her just a government, then he causes the whole nation to suffer just because of one person. Ah, God would never do that. God, ah, God is not, ah, God is not that. But God did that. We're not talking about the God that you have framed in your mind. We're talking about the God of the Bible. Hallelujah. And so if we want, if we're saying that God is the one to advance us, then we must know how God advances his people and what causes him to not advance his people. Hallelujah. Even though he wants them, because it's God who brings these people all the way from Egypt to Canaan. It is God who wants them to have the land more than they even want to have it. Hallelujah. God wants to give them the promised land more than they want to have it. That's why even when their fathers were refusing, God was trying hard to convince them to possess it. So he wants them to advance more than they want to advance. But in as much as God wants them to advance, he cannot advance them because there is something that they have hidden. That is contrary to what he has instructed. And before they could deal with those things, they could not move towards I. Hallelujah. And so, I know that we are at a certain place in our progress. Hallelujah. We have been making progress. But one of the challenges that God is setting before us is that before we go to our next level now, God is saying that deal with the things that are hidden in your life. Do you know that you, you can be a Christian for 10 years and we as a people can just resign? You see, you know what, this guy is just with anger issues. We, we, we have accepted him and you know, there you go. That's just the way they are. Because <laughs> we, and, and, and you yourself also, you know, me, I just got anger. I, 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 I get angry. And that's who I am. That's who I am. And so you must accept me of who I am. God understands me. One of the things that I always say is that God does not understand you. 
Hallelujah. It's a misconception that we have given ourselves. You know what? When someone is struggling with something and you try to correct them and you and say, but God understands me. Let me tell you, God does not understand you. That's why he wrote what he wrote in the Bible. Those are the things that he understands. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Do not lie. That's what God understands. Your weakness is yours. God is saying, you must not lie. I have, a, I have a weakness with this. God, uh, let me just tell you that God doesn't understand your weakness. Uh, you know, because sometimes you, 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 you feel like people don't understand you, but God understands you. Let me tell you that God doesn't understand. God understands that you are the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. He understands that uh, we are no longer under the grace, we are no longer under the law, but under grace. Sin shall not have dominion over your life. That's what God understands. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He said that the grace of God that, uh, that brings salvation is appeared all, unto all men and it teaches him to say no to ungodliness and to worldliness. That's what God understands. He understands that the grace has come to you. He understands that you're not under the law but under grace. What he does not understand is that why are you under grace and still sinning? That's what God doesn't understand. Yeah. Why are you saying that God understands me? He's saying that I don't understand this guy is saying that I'm under the grace of God. So why is he like this? Mm. Mm. Yeah. God might not understand you the way that you think God understands you. <laughs> you are confusing him. <laughs> because you are saying that we are under grace. But those under grace sin has no power over them. Why is this thing power overpowering you if you are under grace? So you are confusing God when you think that God understands you. And so before we can move forward now, Akan then says, you know what? The thing that about Akan is that he thinks that his sin is small. He thinks that it's insignificant. And so we must come to a place where we are open and honest with ourselves that this thing that I am, that I am hiding in my life is not a small thing. It can be a small thing to those around me because in comparison to the next person is a small thing. Hallelujah. But before God is a big thing. And so I must be open with myself that, you know what, there is something, I, I like how, how, how these people, uh, how Joshua confronts this situation. In verse 19, uh, he doesn't ask Akan to say, you know what, did you steal? Hallelujah. I, the, the way that he asks is, what, is, is, I just like it. Now Joshua said to Akan, my son, I beg you, Give glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise <him. laughs> This is how he asks them. Give glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Give glory. And so, my request this morning is that give glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Give glory to God and uh, dig out the things. Hallelujah. The Bible says that let us run the race that is set before us. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily entangles us. Hallelujah. And so the, the requirement for someone who will advance and advance in the race of life is to unburden and untangle. Hallelujah. So there are things that God wants you to untangle yourself from that are causing you to be stowed in your progress. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We could have been millionaires by now. We could have impacted more lives by now. We could have done more by now. But not because God did not want us to be, but because we had entangled ourselves in things that cause us not to progress. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so there are attitudes we must deal with. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Attitudes. Pride. That we must deal with. Hallelujah. Few, feeling more important than we, <laughs> than we really are. Because generally, most people have a generous perspective on their abilities. <laughs> you know, we, more, unless you have low self-esteem. But on the average, if you ask anyone how good they are at anything, they will probably give you an assessment that is a bit higher than what they really are. Hallelujah. We, 
we estimate going up. <laughs> we round up. No one rounds down their abilities. Usually we are, uh, <coughs> we are we are just a notch above what we really are. How is your business doing? Hallelujah. We are we are usually on the upper side of what our business is doing. Hallelujah. And even with pastors. How many people are in your church? We don't round down. We usually just round up, round up uh, close to a hundred. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And, and those things are small to us. And, and uh, in, uh, in uh, Pentecostal circles, they will say, you know what, uh, uh, speaking evangelistically. <laughs> because uh, evangelists would say, you know what, there were 50,000 people at the crusade. But when you really count the people, <laughs> they, you know, probably there were 7,000. But speaking evangelistically, it was a great crowd, maybe 50,000 people. Right. Hallelujah. But God wants us to come to a place where we are in the straight and narrow. Because the Bible has already clearly declared, narrow is the path that leads to life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so if we're going to progress, there is a narrow path of advancement. Hallelujah. It is calling on your integrity. It's calling on holiness. It's calling on righteousness and truth. Amen. And so if God is going to take you from the Jericho that you are in, hallelujah, there are habits that you must now confront, hallelujah. Give glory to God, my sister. Give glory to God, my brother. Hallelujah. <laughs> to praise the name of Jesus. And begin to deal with it. Amen. Because these people could have just said, you know, that I know. Ah, this garment could not have caused all this. There should be something more. There is nothing more. That little thing, hallelujah. Is, is it not what uh, Solomon says in the book of Songs of Solomon? Catch for us the little foxes. The little foxes that spoil the vine. Hallelujah. It's not the big thing. He also continues and says, uh, Flies in perfume spoil the ointment. It's not, it's, not, uh, it's not big things, just a fly in the perfume. So he spoils the ointment. And so it's the little foxes. And he says, catch for us the little foxes. The little foxes that spoil the vine. Hallelujah. And this morning what God is just asking is that catch the little foxes. <laughs> catch the little foxes. Because it's those little foxes that are spoiling the vine of your progress. Yeah. When you're saying, ah, it's just little foxes. I just need to focus. Ah, it's just, you know, once in a while, I just, uh, <laughs> it's, it's not much, it's just once in a while. God is saying that, catch that, because if you don't catch it, it's going to spoil your progress. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And so, we cannot delve into the length and breadth of the species of foxes that are in your vineyard. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Because many of the things that we, we, we have hidden in our lives, it is inconceivable that a man like me could be hiding a thing like this. Yeah. And so if we're going to address it, we would probably not address it because we would not even think it concerning you. Amen. Uh, and so it is you who is best right? Position to give glory to God. <laughs> <laughs> and offer that thing up. Right. And say, you know what? I just thought it was just a small garment. I didn't realize yeah. that it could have this kind of an effect. There is a land lying <laughs> before us. An entire nation God has set before us. May we not lose what God has given us for a garment. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How short-sighted was this man? There are territories yet to be gained. Hallelujah. Houses they did not build, that the promise. Vineyards. All these promises that are lying beyond the horizon. But he says, you know what? I am going to mortgage that for a Babylonian garment. I, 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 I hope he could live in that garment. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. Because there are houses that have been promised, but he sacrifices all those houses for a garment. I, I, I don't know what a Babylonian garment looks like, but I hope it has got lands and houses in it. But it doesn't make sense that someone would sacrifice their entire future. Over a little habit. Amen. Little pornography here and there. Little lie here and there. Why is it now? <laughs> Faces are now turning. <laughs> a little flat here and there. Hallelujah. It's, it's just flating. I've not done anything wrong. It's just. It's just flirting. I, I didn't, we didn't go past just talking. It's just talking. We're just here and there. It's, a, it's just a small garment. And we wonder. Because God is not like us. The thing that God was ministering to me is that, you know what? Let the people untangle themselves. Untangle and bundle. Because the path is laid before us. It's clear. But we have entangled ourselves. It's not the devil. We have dealt with the devil. Hallelujah. We have dealt with obstacles. We have, given, we have been given favor. The people in Canaan are all afraid of us. The report of what God has been doing has gone before us. There is nothing that can stop. Their hearts are like water. They have melted. But we have tied ourselves and entangled ourselves. We can't go past a small city like I to the great promises of God. Because why? There are little things that we hide in ourselves that we wonder. And when we're looking at the challenges that we're facing in life, we never visit the garments that are hidden. Because we don't think that they are a problem. If there's anyone, probably there's someone who is bewitching me somewhere. There's someone who is conspiring against me and my progress. But there is no one conspiring out there. There is something that is dug in your tent. Amen. When they unraveled that thing and they dug it up, God says, go now to I. And they routed that place, they took it. Hmm. The same people. But why? They dealt with the thing that was, that they dug in their tents. I don't know. Thanks. It could be a deal. That's a bit shady. <laughs> There's a way that you do things. It can be acceptable in the marketplace because not everyone that is there is saved. But God is saying, you know what, I can't partner with this. And the thing about it, he says, uh, the Bible says that he put it amongst his things. Hallelujah. And the things that we've put amongst our things, that should not be amongst our things. Hallelujah. That we are now saying, you know, this is the way that we do things. It's amongst the way you do things, but God is saying, you know what? Please remove that thing. It should not be amongst your things. Hallelujah. People, the moon must not be amongst our friends or amongst even our contacts. Hallelujah. There are such people who must be blocked at all costs because they are a snare to Israel. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And so, block them. Yeah. Avoid them. Yeah. Take them off um, from among your friends. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because you can entangle yourself and store the advancement that God has for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. And so, the word this morning is untangle and unbundle. <laughs> Hallelujah. By yourselves, even though it's been destined by God for your life, Panash, you must determine that I am going to take it. Hallelujah. By force. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Forcefulness to advance. Away, and I'll be I'll see you do it again. See you.